at the sweeper system in this match. Well, Mayo were achieving a lot of the things that they need to achieve, but I mean, this was a disaster. Colin Boyle in completely the wrong position, watch it. He then takes off on a collision course with a man running at the diagonal. I mean, oh, and he's through straight away. Colm should have been backing away towards his goals there because now there's a clear route to goals. And this is the product of only starting to work on this two weeks before the Donegal match. And you can see that it's a problem. Let's contrast with Dublin sweeper system. Keane O'Sullivan in exactly the right spot. He's conscious that his job is to prevent goals. He's always backing away. He's not running in rashly. His job is to control that central area, a bit like Colm Kavanagh's role for Tyrone. Although it's hard to think of a more expert handling of the role than Colm Kavanagh's. And I mean, you can see the contrast throughout the first half where Aidan O'Shea has been put under immense yeah. pressure and the ball's being kicked in there. But in defence of the system, and I agree with you, it takes a long time to get a defensive system worked out properly. But as the game progressed, they got to handle on it. And Absolutely, one, th yeah. one thing I admire, two things I admired about Mayo's defending all over the field. They had more turnovers than Dublin, but secondly, outside of the penalty, they conceded no free to them within scoring distance, as opposed to Dublin's lack of discipline, who handed six handy Pat, scoring frees Gene, to Killian Gene Rock has gone off the Dublin team for the yeah, second half. Not That's surprising. Uh, uh, Kevin no McManaman case. is coming in yeah. in his place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kevin I mean, McManaman, of course, will, will run at the Mayo yeah. defence I mean, and will cause them much more problems. He's a different type of player, but yeah. the Mayo defence, they really have to get to grips with Kieran Kilkenny because he was the, yes, of the main yes. attacker yeah. in the first I mean, half. Is, is it just me, Colin, or is the main issue here that Mayo ought to be pushing up on of the course. Dublin kick -out? Absolutely. They, they, Dublin yeah. have won every single every, kick out with yeah. a short kick out. They're quite happy to do that. They, the last thing Dublin want is an aerial contest yeah. in the Dublin, middle of the field. Dublin haven't won every kick out. Stephen Cluxton oh. has just kicked to do just it up there. Just passed it to an unmarked yeah. man. And you can't allow it. I mean, Mayo, what you, are they thinking here? They, they've got to push up on them it, it's and force them to kick you, long. You, I mean, that was all. We, we assumed automatically yeah. that that was part you of the You can't plan. allow a team with Dublin's athleticism and pace yeah. and movement yeah. and, and support play and angles of running. You can't give them possession. And I agree with the lads. Yeah. Mayo in the second half must push up. You, Dean Rock will make uh, the loss of Dean Rock. He had, his movement, his walk rate, his pace was poor. McMenamin would bring pace. Actually, one player I'm very disappointed with and have been disappointed with all year because he's probably the greatest wing forward of the modern generation is Paul Flynn, who's mm. had a very mm. disappointing yes. season. And but, again today, and I look back, at where Paul Flynn is, and he's sitting back very deep. Back, back, you, it, is, it is interesting, gentlemen, that Dublin are winning the match, but Mayo are out now for about but five back, minutes. Back and there's no the sign of the dubs. But, boys, back, back on the kickouts. Back on those kickouts. I mean, you have a situation here where if Dublin are kicking long, which is exactly what Mayo want and what they can engineer if they go flat. If those kickouts malfunction, Dublin are in serious yeah. trouble down the middle. Donegal showed that last year. Three turnovers, one, two from the three turnovers. Kerry, two years yeah. ago, when Fitzmaurice in his first season went to work on them, Kerry almost beat them by turning over those kickouts. And, Dub and Mayo are standing back, the, the best midfield in the country, and allowing them to kick short every time. There's the sub in on the Dublin team. And that note, let's go back to the commentary box to rejoin Darren Maloney and Desi Dolan. Yes, thanks, Michael. There is Kevin McManaman replacing Dean Rock. Mayo on the field for, that must be close to three minutes, waiting for Dublin to return. Kane O'Sullivan now deciding to change the footwear for uh, the start of the second half. Aidan O'Shea of Mayo, as he did at the start of the match, out alongside Tom Parsons for the start of the uh, second half we're told that Rory O'Carroll has uh, received 10 stitches to that wound above his left eye and he will not return for Dublin Mick Fitzsimons will be on until the end of the game and at half time uh, a notice went up to say just to confirm what we knew from a while ago that it's a full house here at Croke Park today at times the the atmosphere and the level of noise has dipped below what you would expect with 82 and a bit thousand here Desi yeah I think people are expecting this epic match and so far it hasn't delivered only I'd say no Mayo forward has scored yet Dublin have been sloppy at times but the managers will be delighted get in get talking to their players sort out their tactics for the second half and go at it well, that was over hit for Dermot Connolly. So, uh, it trickles out. Robbie Henley forced to kick it long and kicked it to Michael Darren McCauley. There was no Mayo man very near him as he caught that, but Tom Parsons is certainly near him now. 
he was impeded, I think, as he tried to take that free Tom Parsons. He'd be happy enough with that there. It was a fairly bad kick in. <laughs> Kevin McLaughlin. Aidan O'Shea's gone into full forward. Killian O'Connor there beside him. The score of six frees in the first half. Here comes Keith Higgins. Higgins turning back into trouble. Jason Doherty in a better position. Gets his shot away, Jason Doherty. And that is not his best effort. It's gone out for wide number three. Yeah, great run there by Keith Higgins. I marked him in one of his first games. I thought he's a little small lad, probably won't make it. Two all stars later, one of the best players in the country. Tricky one for Kevin McMenamin. He's not able to deal with it. Colin Boyle is. Jack McCaffrey and Dermot Connolly there with him. Mayo free. Dermot O'Connor is free. Here come Mayo. Referee spots a foul by Philly McMahon in on the 20 metre line on Aidan O'Shea. Joe McQuillan spotted this off the ball. Philly McMahon's not happy. Watch. Yeah, very correct decision, but you can see it here. He's grabbing him, he's folding him. And, and we discussed this, Killian O'Connor's got six points in the first half. Dublin need to stop copping up these frees because this is bread and butter stuff for Killian O'Connor. He doesn't miss these frees. But this is another gift. <laughs> he has been flawless. But a lot of them have been in those positions where you would expect a free taker of his quality to slot over, and he's done that. But yeah. the, the frees they're giving, these are presents, yeah. keeping Mayo in the game. And I was talking to Michael Conroy, the player, he's on the Mayo panel, but did a really bad job on his shoulder. But he was saying, Dutton are giving them awful easy frees. Mayo are playing really poorly, and all these frees are keeping them in the game. And it's now just a two point game. Jason Doherty, Dermot O'Connor. Here's David Drake. Dermot O'Connor in a better position trying to draw it in. Oh, yes, that is a stunning point from Dermot O'Connor. He dropped one short during the first half, but that is real quality. And the first score for a forward for Mayo today, but what a score outside of the booth. That's a dream of a shot. He'd be delighted with that. Apart from Lee Pig and the O'Connors doing the business for Mayo. Tom Parsons, they're just one behind. Now Patrick Durkin, Jason Doherty from 44 metres wide. One half of the Mayo management duo, Pat Holmes in the centre of your picture. Well, that, there's nothing wrong with that yeah. kick out. This is something we thought they were going to do beforehand. Nothing wrong with it. You can go inside the 20 metre line once the ball has been kicked and travels 13 metres. And that's exactly what happened. You could see players around and you heard some of the supporters claiming a free. Now it's Paddy Andrews. Lee Keegan slips. Andrews scored two points during the first half. Kevin McManaman. Here he goes. McManaman gets away from Keegan. He's through. Kevin McManaman over a point. Kevin McManaman. He does that so well. He really is an impact player. He's a brilliant player to bring in off the bench. I know he mightn't like it, but he really, when he gets, he runs at his man. He's so difficult to stop. Low centre of gravity, very difficult, and a great score. He started a lot of games this year. Robbie Henley's kick out is won by Dublin. They're forcing him to kick long. Dermot Connolly pinging that in towards Bernard Brogan. He was tightly marked by Chris Barrett, who touched it last. It's still in play. Dermot O'Connor. It'll certainly be up around the 14-kilometre mark for uh, ground covered. 
over the course of these 70 odd minutes. Jason Doherty, Kevin McLaughlin, Doherty gets it back again, then runs into traffic. Nobody coming over to try and support him. There's plenty of Dublin players there. There was help from Kevin McLaughlin. Now it's Seamus O'Shea. Connolly shielding the ball, and then there's an incident on the ground with Dermot O'Connor, and the referee getting very close to it. It's high stakes. A lot of balls touching the ball on the ground a couple of occasions. Here it is again. Yeah, he touches his hand there. He's lucky to get away with it, and the referee gives him a free for that one. But just before he went to pick it up, I thought Jack just, just touched the ball on the ground. That's Johnny Cooper. He felt the full force. There have been some big hits in this match. Dublin getting ready to make a change. It's going to be a defender. I think it's going to be John Small. But perhaps that was as a precaution should Johnny Cooper not have been able to continue. But look, we'll see. See the very handy more and warming yeah. up. And he makes an impact every time he comes in. He has the tracksuit top off. Andy Moran is getting ready to come in for Mayo. John Small will be in soon for Dublin. A Mayo man down on the ground, and the referee has called a halt to the play. Yeah. It's Keno Sullivan off the ball. And this is where it comes back in the first half. He got away with one. It's a lucky man today. So, Keno Sullivan goes in the book. Some high. John Small is in for Johnny Cooper. Johnny Cooper hasn't left the field of play, now he is going off. O'Shea almost had too much time to think about that. It was a poor free. Tall Flynn. Now Flynn launches it up, and Chris Barrett is there in front of Bernard Brogan. Colin Boyle. Tom Tarsett. Parsons hanging on to it and fouled again. I think it was a good call. Michael Darren Fairson, he tackles hard, but he's just holding on to him a small bit there. And give the free. It's a difficult, it's a difficult kick for Killian O'Connor, but Mayo are getting on plenty of possession. Dublin are struggling at the minute to get the ball up to their forward line. Haven't seen a whole pile of Bernard Brogan, but this man will certainly be a great outlet and a great option to get a score. David Drake off, one of the biggest cheers of the day for Andy Moran coming in for Mayo. And it's Killian O'Connor time. He's kicked seven. This is tricky. O'Connor. Same result. Just one between them. He really is a quality player. He's, uh, I, don't, I sometimes say feel he doesn't get the credit he deserves. Maybe he's so good at the freeze, but at the same time, I think he's an all-round, he's a really, really quality footballer. Same routine from the kick-out. I played with Stephen Cluxton in a Railway Cup match. He won, we won 28 out of 29 kickouts. But I think today, 
Dublin going to get a clean sweep, which I never thought would happen. They're not travelling very far, though. Here's Jack McCaffrey. It's Kevin McLaughlin behind him. Drag back free in Dublin. And they're calling for Stephen Cluxton to come forward. Dean Rock not on the field of play anymore. And this is in Cluxton territory. Here's why the free was given. Yeah, just left that arm in small bit too long. And Kevin McLaughlin may all pride themselves under good tackling, but just left that arm in a second too long. But a big kick and a big opportunity for Dublin. They need to get a score. They're struggling up front, I think, at times, not getting the ball into an, enough into Bernard Brogan. same at various periods of the first half. There's no real flow to the game. Stephen Cluxton was OK for distance, but not for accuracy. Wide number four. Still a point between them. And the Mayo supporters are loving that. They're up on their feet. Lee Keegan. O'Shea still been marked by Philly McMahon ran away from O'Shea and McMahon gets possession Brian Fenton off goes Keno Sullivan James McCarthy launched in long Kevin McManaman in there with Bernard Brogan Henley fisted it out it's come to Kieran Kilkenny three points he got in the first half that's extremely high and the decision of the umpire is wide. Jim Gavin's looking a bit edgy there. He knows his importance. These are opportunities that Dublin need to get. It's not free-flowing. It's not the Dublin we expect. The real stylish attacking football, you'd say, today. It's been very soft start, and they really are struggling to get scores on the board. Jason Doherty picked out by Robbie Henley. Aidan O'Shea back in at full forward. Killian O'Connor further out. Kevin McLaughlin helping. Tom Parsons. Kevin McLaughlin again. McLaughlin off his right. It's miles away. It's fair to say he likes his left foot more than his right foot, but at this level you'd expect it. It was a free shot. It was 30 yards out. Even though he's bad foot, you'd expect to get it. Can you remember one long kick out from Stephen Clubs to one out to the middle? No, not all day. He's, he's, I'd say he's 100% on the kickouts for his own kickouts today, which is an incredible stat. John Small. Keno Sullivan. Small again. Michael Darrow McCauley. Ran straight into Seamus O'Shea. Possession has been lost. The referee, though, has blown his whistle. Going to give Mayo a free and he's going to take action against Michael Darrow McCauley. And that's the question. They're getting to the 45 yard line. After that, there's nothing it's happening. A black card. Yeah, Keith Higgins snuck in there. He got the ball. Black card against Michael Darrow McCauley. His afternoon comes to a premature end in the 15th minute of the second half. That's it. Basketball turn, which is good at And he just holds it. it it's a hard black card. You. People, supporters, everyone's getting frustrated with this thing. Very tough. When you've seen Sullivan, Keno Sullivan's earlier in the match, you'd wonder what the rules are. His replacement will be Dennis Bastic. Dublin lead by a point. Here come Mayo, Lee Keegan, Chris Barrett. There's a bit of a gap. Barrett blocked down by Jack McCaffrey. Now it's Andy Moore. Lee Keegan again. Dermot O'Connor turns back inside. Dermot O'Connor for Mayo. No. Furious with himself. Dennis Bastic now onto the field of play. And it's there for whoever wants it, Dara. Dublin have got one point in 15 minutes in the second half. Michael Dara's after getting the black card. Mayo had lots of opportunities to kick twice. It's like no one wants to win it at the minute. There's the long kick out, and the referee spotted a push. A 
against Dennis Bastic. Mayo up scoring Dublin by three points to one since the match restarted. Andy Moran. Bad wide. And that's what I said. Who wants to win this game? Andy Moran, he's, he's prolific when he comes on. Generally, he never misses. And I suppose there's pressure on all these kicks at that stage. That's this, this, this age. Paddy Andrews is fouled by Jared Caprike. Another opportunity for Stephen Cluxton. Yeah, he's on the move, heading up to take the free. No. No, they've decided Jeremy, against bringing him Jeremy forward. pulls yeah. rank. Fancies it on the left foot. Some talent to be able to do a left foot or right foot. He's going to go with the right, looking at the yeah. way he's uh, shaping up to this. Stephen doesn't know whether to go back or not. He's halfway up the pitch. It's like as if everyone's calling him. He's still moving forward. Dear McConnelly off the outside <laughs> of the right boot. No need to worry there, Dara. <laughs> he backs himself every time. A sublime striker, the ball. Tom Parsons. Fair bit of pressure on him. It's two between them. Certainly can't take your eyes off it, but it's been strange at times. This match is Seamus O'Shea chipped into Andy Moran, who's out in front of Michael Fitzsimons, and Moran has fluffed another one. Done all the hard work there, Michael Fitzsimons beside him, and it was a great opportunity. That's two for Andy Moran. And that ball was flipped up the field by Stephen Cluxton to Dear McConnelly. Will Dublin get more offensive now? Kieran Kilkenny. Drag back free to Dublin. Yeah, Colin Boyle's a tough tackler and hands in. So, you know, hand in, hand out, generally pretty good. He's a tough cookie, but he'd be disappointed to give a free kick okay, on that occasion. Now, it is going to be Stephen Cluxton to take this free. It will be a huge ask for Connolly to repeat the dose from even further out on his so-called weaker side, but he dealt with that pretty well just a couple of minutes ago. We're inside the final quarter. Alan Brogan will be in shortly for Dublin. Stephen Cluxton. Wide. They've had six of them, and there's a lot of tense Dublin faces around Croke Park. Ian O'Sullivan had his hand on the back of Kevin McLaughlin, so it's a Mayo free. Certainly a saw free, but definitely a free. Just touched him very slightly on the back. And Dublin have got two scores, all frees in the second half. Alan Brogan replaces Paddy Andrews. These two have had some very high-scoring meetings in recent times, league, championship. There's never much between them in the championship. And who's it going to be? Will it be Dublin or will it be Mayo to play Kerry in the All-Ireland final next month? Brian Fenton putting pressure on his own defence. Here come Mayo, Dermot O'Connor. They trail by two points. Aidan O'Shea. Simon's there with him, O'Shea taking them all on. Couldn't hang on to it, and then he collides with Philly McMahon. Dear McConnelly goes forward, and Philly McMahon has gone down injured, and the referee calls a halt. What exactly happened with Aidan O'Shea and Philly McMahon? Yeah. Here it is. It's not a whole pile in it, just coming together. Aidan was frustrated. He had the ball, he was looking for a free, didn't win it. He was trying to get through on the tackle chair, but it's just a collision, I think.
right under the nose of the linesman so you'd expect him to deal with it fairly convincingly let's have another look at this yeah Philly was in his line German had the ball he was trying to get through to him he wouldn't say it was an all out strike or anything like that no. I think that's the decision of the officials as well in fairness, Aiden was frustrated. He had the ball. He held on to too long. He should have got rid of it before all the all the pressure came on. Crowd aren't happy anyway. Yeah, we need a ball to restart the match. And that's it, Mayo need a score crucial. They had great opportunities there and missed a lot of them. Andy Moore and Jeremy O'Connor and all vital opportunities missed. They need to settle down and get a score quickly. It's a long time since Mayo last scored. Almost 12 minutes. Here's Jack McCaffrey. Dublin got the last score in the match. McCaffrey, they could be in for a goal here, Brian. Felt and saved by Robbie Hennelly. Crucial second. It's in the back of the net. It's in the back of the net. Is it Kevin McManaman again? It would appear to be. Penalty had kept it out, but then it squirted loose, and Dublin have a goal. A massive score, and great ball in there. Great save by Rob Henley, but it squeezed out right to Ken McManum. He is the torture, he is the man at the right place at the right time. Inspirational substitution by Jim Gavin. Well, that is what Kevin McManaman does and has done many, many times. Think 2011, think 2013 against Kerry. And here he comes on again as the substitute and gets what could be the crucial goal. There's still plenty of time for Mayo, but Dublin now lead by five. Tomas Brady is on for Brian Fenton on the Dublin team. That's gone out for a 45. Killian O'Connor keen to take it. He has kicked eight frees. Their forwards have struggled to make an impact on the Dublin defence but Killian O'Connor has done all he can to keep Mayo in touch Dublin by five it could be Dublin by four in a few seconds it's all about the forwards there and like the problem today is Mayo have only got one point from the forward, Jeremy O'Connor, and that's been the real issue. Killian has been seriously impressive on his free taking, but their creative creativity up front has been lacking at times for Mayo. He's kept them in it. From the 45, it's badly needed, and it goes over. Nine frees, nine place balls converted by Ballantubber's Killian O'Connor. He's given an exhibition in kicking, and in fairness, he got a couple of easy ones in the first half. It built up his confidence, but his kicking today has been exceptional. They need a goal. Kevin McManaman, off he goes. Dermot O'Connor tracking him. Paul Flynn offers some assistance. Bernard Brogan, he's got away from Chris Barrett. Runners appearing off his shoulder, and Bernard Brogan does his stuff, kept it himself. When the chance came, he was able to pop it over the bar, and that five-point gap is restored. Kevin McManaman. Keith Higgins there. Alan Brogan. Oh, <laughs> that is some score. He's only on the field a couple of minutes. But that is as good as you're going to see. Very difficult angle. Yeah. Alan Brogan special. And that's why the Brogan family are renowned in Dublin with a savage reputation. But like you see Bernard on the left foot, 5-16 before today's game. And Alan coming up with the big scores at vital times. He doesn't have a great record in All-Ireland semi-finals, Alan Brogan. The Donegal game, a huge motivating factor for them coming in here. Mayo don't 
don't need any more motivating factors. But they're six points down, and is it slipping away from them? Here's Jack McCaffrey. Mayo's defence has just shut down, and Dublin now scoring for fun, having found it so hard in the opening 20 minutes of this second half. So hard to nail him down. Jack McCaffrey, his engine, his power, his pace. A brilliant player having a brilliant season for Dublin. Alan Freeman in for Jason Doherty on the Mayo team. There is Alan Freeman. And it all came from Dennis Bastic round midfield. A brilliant catch. He's just one of them players. He doesn't get the headlines. He goes about his business quietly, efficiently. But he's been really good in midfield today. They're starting to celebrate the Dublin supporters here. Chris Barrett of Mayo. Colin Boyle. Tom Tarsons. They need a couple of goals. Andy Moore. And they'll take a point right here. Chance presents itself and over it goes. Six points is the Dublin advantage. He really is an inspirational player, Andy Moore, and he had two previous opportunities, missed them. An important score. Three points off there, total now coming from play. Belted along by Stephen Cluxton and secured after a fashion. Dennis Bastic was there first, now James McCarthy. Paul Flynn was in space ahead of him, and Flynn is now unmarked, and Philly McMahon has seen it. Again, the Mayo defence just shut off, and Paul Flynn keeps the ball in play. Flynn having a go himself, but lashed it wide. May not matter at this stage of the match. Bit careless, and the boys mentioned in the studio he's not having his best season, four all stars in a row. But again, Dennis Bastic in midfield winning primary possession, so important. Philly quick free, setting up Paul, but poor play there. Lee Keegan. Aidan O'Shea. Now Keith Higgins, and Higgins does his stuff in front of the post. They're still plugging away. Yeah, and these are leaders, Sandy Moore and Keith Higgins. Such an inspirational player, Keith Higgins. A forward or a back. A brilliant servant to Mayo football. Now for the goal they need. And there's a man, Barry Moore, and we haven't seen him. Like Maybe at this stage, throw him into the full forward line. They need a goal. He's out warming up at the moment. No time like the present, and time is Mayo's enemy at the moment. Stephen Cluxton, the mistake. They could be in bother here. Andy Mora! It's come off the post. It was John Small who got back onto the line. Was that the moment for Mayo? A huge error from Stephen Cluxton. And John Small, the Dublin substitute, got back on the line to deny Andy Mora. Mayo are desperate for a goal. Here they come again, Aidan O'Shea hanging on to it a long time, now it's Kevin McLaughlin. Five points separate the two counties, free in Mayo. They need to get on with this very quickly. They're desperate for a goal, and they were so close. This is how close. Stephen Cluxton straight to Andy Moore, and what an Here's opportunity. Here's O'Connor, and O'Connor has lashed it wide. wide. Well, they took it quickly, it took everybody by surprise. But here's this previous goal chance, catch our breath. And that has to be a goal, you'd imagine, at this stage. Andy Moore and got it, Stephen O'Cluxton's clearance. But Andy backed himself a man inside. Great play there by John Small, I think it was. On the line, off the post, brilliant recovery. Well, Stephen Cluxton got a touch on that as well. It was an even better save from John Small. Now Barry Moran is on for Seamus O'Shea. 
They've got to throw the kitchen sink the whole lot at Dublin now, trailing by five points. Stephen Cluxton kicks it long again. It's claimed by Barry Moore, his first action in the game. Now, what's the referee going to do? The notebook is out, Moran is livid. Dennis Bastic is the player being spoken to. Well, it's a black card for Dennis Bastic. And they all started quickly. Tom Parsons. Cluxton with a very powerful fist out, but still the danger not clear. It's back with Alan Freeman, and Alan Freeman slots it over. Three in a row for Mayo. Did you see Stephen there? He's not going to give away a goal, taking no chances, drives it back out. Good score by Alan, but through it, the ball was kicked in long. They need to get it in long, in around their box, and see what happens. Dennis Bastic off. You can see it there, a bit of it on the ground, a bit of a trip. Jack McCaffrey. Stephen Cluxton went short with the kick out that time. Here's John Small. Mayo trailing by four. Last three minutes. Eric Lowndes is going to come in to replace Dennis Bastic. Dear McConnelly, last three minutes. They were cruising not so long ago. Barry Moore, Colin Boyle, Dermot O'Connor, this is promising, here's Kevin McLaughlin, Killian O'Connor, they've got to go for it, all or nothing now for Mayo, Colin Boyle is in there, Boyle goes down, is it a penalty, is it a penalty, it is a Mayo penalty, that's a big call Dara, a huge call, initially here it is, gets the ball, not a whole pile of contact. Tough call. At such an important stage. Very well worked. That all came back. Killian Keno Sullivan back the far end. Should have went down and picked up the ball. Alan Brogan had a chance to get it. They missed it and it was a quick counter-attack. Massive call. call by Joe McQuillan. Mayo have a lifeline in the final two minutes. Four between them. Killian O'Connor, who's kicked those nine frees, now has to beat Stephen Cluxton in the Dublin goal to bring them back to within one. He's on fire today, Killian O'Connor. Crucial kick at this stage. The tension around this. Killian O'Connor from Ballantubber. He's kept Mayo in this match. He's got to do it all over again from the penalty spot. Killian O'Connor, a goal! They're just one behind! And the Mayo supporters believe now, Dara, they had no luck for years, and this is the opportunity. There still is time, there will be injury time. They would take a draw off you right now, I'm sure. Last minute of the 70, and Cluxton has kicked the ball straight to Mayo. Here they come, Ain't no shame. Killian O'Connor again, it's back to Andy Moran, over! They are level! Unbelievable! Mayo's leader on and off the field has brought them level! And is there more in Mayo? They have come back from the dead. It's all square. All coming from a bad kick out from Stephen Cluxton, straight to Kevin McLaughlin. Great composure by Aidan O'Shea. Straight out, and who would you want at the end of the ball? And a crucial time on the Andy Morn. And where is Stephen Cluxton going to put the next kick out? They haven't scored in nine minutes. Mayo have brought Mickey Sweeney in for Dermot O'Connor. The next possession in this game, absolutely vital. Dublin at one stage were leading by seven. Look at it now. And they're struggling at midfield. Dennis Bastic has gone off. Keno Sullivan has gone out to midfield. But Mayo have Andy Morn. And Michael Darren McCauley gone as well. Here they come. Aidan O'Shea. And now Alan Freeman. Philly McMahon put everything on the line to make the challenge. Aidan O'Shea has it. Remember the comeback in 2006, Mayo. The Kieran McDonald show. 
Here has Mickey Sweeney. Sweeney blocked down. Aiden O'Shea there. And now Alan Brogan. This is a remarkable second half. Five minutes of additional time. Lord knows what could happen in that five minutes. Just reflect of what's happened in the last five. And Mickey Sweeney, what an opportunity. He needed to show a bit more composure, take his time, men around him. Don't get blocked down. Jack McCaffrey has, I think, got a foul. Five minutes injury time. It's a big... It's, there's going to be lots of action between now and then. Dublin haven't scored in... Well, it's now ten minutes. And listen to the Mayo supporters. A few minutes ago, they were thinking about the journey home. But there's still a lot of football to be played. That was touched on the ground by Kevin McManaman. It's a Mayo free. The momentum is all Mayo now. It's come to life. Great play by Colin Boyle. Good tight. And then Keith Higgins in to sweep up. Tom Parsons. Dublin just look at how they feel vulnerable every time Mayo come forward. And Philly McMahon, Aidan O'Shea is claiming that he was fouled. The referee not having any of it. I met somebody beforehand who was talking about the draw. Didn't they draw in 1985? They drew in 1955 as well. There's a tangle off the ball. The referee is playing an advantage to Dublin at the moment, and he's going to give a free in. He's given a free in to Dublin. Yeah, it's a long time. There was a lot of advantage. And Stephen Cluxton is, I think, heading forward. I think it was Patrick Durkin went in there. A rash tackle. We've seen a small bit of inexperience by this Paddy Durkin on that occasion. Yeah, Stephen Cluxton now, there's a, a spring in his step. Oh, he... Not the official scene, by the way. There was a, a tangle on the ground involving Dermot Connolly and Lee Keegan, which the linesman was watching. It's on the right of your picture. And you could just got a, a glimpse of it there. And all the while this is going on, Stephen Cluxton is uh, sizing up this opportunity from the free. Yeah, and Stephen has missed two of these in the second half there. Big, he's done it before. We've seen him do an All-Ireland final under extreme pressure. Yeah. Similar sort of position as well <laughs> from four years ago. So uh, You wouldn't back against them. Yellow for Lee Keegan and a red for Dermot Connolly. So a yellow for Keegan, but Connolly gone. On a straight red card. Oh, that's a big call. Two black cards, a red card. If Dublin can get this kick, they'll be delighted to get out of this one. Well, we're in the last minute of the added time, and Stephen Cluxton has this free to put them a point up. Off it goes from Stephen Cluxton, and they're waving it wide, and it has gone wide. It's still a draw game. Celebrations from the Mayo supporters, but is there time for more action? Paul Flynn flew at that ball, but here comes Keith Higgins. Two Dublin men down injured. Now Andy Moran, he tied it up. Ball runs loose now, Jack McCaffrey is dragged back. And it's a yes. Dublin free. Will they take a draw right now? Well, the referee yeah. has called them back. There's a head injury. Alan Brogan, Alan Brogan I think it is. he's down. He's going to have to stop play. Just can't keep up with it. He's hurt. He yeah. certainly is badly it, it, hurt. It, it, it was a collision, yeah. yeah. Two players from the, on the Rob Henley kick out. It was won by Mayo, but two Dublin players collided. He had settled for a draw at this stage and <laughs> see these team, two teams go at it again. Alan Brogan, oh, he's hurt, yeah. yeah, he's certainly hurt he's and late, dazed. Yeah. The five minutes gone. 
Kane O'Sullivan goes back to Stephen Cluxton. That's it. There is the whistle, it's over. What an amazing last quarter of this game. Dublin had a seven-point lead, but Mayo dragged themselves back in. And in some style as well, Dublin didn't score for the last, what, 15 minutes of the game. Mayo hung on and hung on. Killian O'Connor's penalty, it was a huge call, brilliantly converted by the Mayo forward. And then Andy Moran levelled it up. Stephen Cluxton could have won it with that free at the end, but it wasn't to be. Dear McConnelly's red card, black cards all around the place. The full-time score at the end of the second All-Ireland semi-final, just like last year. It's headed in a draw, 2-12 to Mayo's 1-15. Desi, sum that up. I talked for a long time about subdued, <laughs> and once 50th minute came, the, gar the game sparked to life. I think myself it was a soft penalty, but Killian O'Connor was exceptional today. Exquisite free taken, 1-9 I think he got. Stephen Cluxton, you'd bank on him to get that kick. The game had everything in the last couple of minutes, and I think Dublin will be happy and relieved to come out of this with a draw. Well, Stephen Cluxton just uh, having a brief word with Tom Parsons as he leaves the field. Aidan O'Shea had some good moments, but he was very tightly marked, found it difficult to get into the game. But Mayo drew with Kerry in the semi-final last year, and here they go again, another replay for a place in the all Ireland final. In fairness, their supporters, I came up early, the support outside, the atmosphere, they were incredible, so they were today. Let's get some reaction now. Let's hear from Claire McNamara. Killian O'Connor, you look to be out of that game. You dragged yourself back in, thanks hugely to your contribution. What are you feeling now? Um, I suppose I'm tired. It was a tough game, an abrasive game, but um, the boys didn't surprise me there. We dug deep. You know, we didn't play particularly well in the second half, but... You know, the boys are, are never going to give up, and uh, we hung in there right to the end. It was an incredibly tight, a tense, and often very tetchy game. Your freeze really kept Mayo in it for a very long period. Yeah, I suppose um, that's just the way the game went. We got plenty of freeze. We were pulled down there a couple of times going through. Um, they had a lot of bodies back there, a couple of sweepers, so it was always going to be difficult. Space was always going to be at a premium, but look, we took, we took, we took some of our chances, but not enough. The penalty there was a big call, obviously, but you showed great composure to put it away. Ah, uh, yeah, well, look, it was a team move. We worked at the full length of the field. Boiler won it. It's my job to take them, but, um, yeah, look, we needed it and we got it, but uh, we think there's more in us and we're going to bring it next week. Yeah, an incredible game, full of incident. How do you go about doing all that again? Well, it's just follow the process, get in there, get stretched, get the recovery session in, get the food in, and uh, get back training next week and looking forward to it already. Thanks very much, Killian. Thank you. And that is how it finished. To say that it finished in a welter of excitement would be a complete understatement. <laughs> uh, we're back next Saturday for the replay. Uh, time to be uh, just announced yet. Pat Spillan, what a finish. What a game. Absolutely yeah. enjoyable, absolutely brilliant. Uh, you can quibble about the freeze and the stop-start nature of the game, but you just had to admire the character, the fitness levels, the physicality, and you can point to Dublin handing Mayo 1-8 in, 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 in fouls, and you can point to Mayo's in, 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 inability up front, I mean, one forward, starting forward, got one point from play. But what you have to say is that you've just got to sit back and admire the character of these bunch of players. This is pretty much, Michael, the same bunch of players that have been there for the last five years, defeat after defeat in big matches. Ten minutes to go, seven points down, you'd say game over. But two things, what these, this bunch have, character and spirit, great attitude, and the subs walk the treat, mm. Andy Morton, Barry Morton, Alan Freeman. It's great to have a draw, it's, Michael, and it's great to be back here again next half. It's, it's fantastic. It's also, it's also, Joe Brody, a case of two teams. What Pat says about Mayo is true. But before today's game, yeah. we talked about Dublin, and when Dublin come under pressure, panic. this mm. notion that there's a flakiness in them, that they panic, yeah. 
I think that part of the reason is that Mayo are recalibrating the team formation over the last two months, and that's a difficult recalibration. And so they've forgotten the thing that made them the team that they were, which is that they drive at teams. Right. And, and when they started to drive at Dublin in the last ten minutes, I mean, Dublin basically collapsed in that in that period. And it was only, I mean, I was must yeah. say I was really disappointed with Dublin's cynicism throughout the game today. I mean, they had a couple of black cards. It was a blatant example of feigning. So we await the misconduct discrediting the association charge for that. Really disappointed to see Dublin playing that way, I have to say. But in relation to Mayo, just back. after half time, between the 42nd and the 42nd minute, five really good chances to draw level. They missed all of them. Yeah. And at that stage, then of course they give away a stinker of a goal. I mean, as bad as it, they're regular yeah. as clockwork. Two bad goals on big days in Croke Park. But then we saw what they were made of. Yeah. You know, in a very difficult situation. And if truth be told, they had the opportunity to go and win the yeah. game. But a fantastic and epic finale. Yeah. And delighted to see it. the way Mayo found themselves again in the last 10 minutes when they yeah. had to. I suspect Colin Morrick, if we were having this conversation 10 minutes ago, we different. would be having a different conversation. Absolutely. Like, for 60 yeah. minutes, this game was quite flat. Yeah. And it finished the last 10 or 12 minutes. The excitement overshadowed Van what had gone did. before, yeah. which was a pretty dull and boring game with what you would say Dublin almost in total control. And then when it looked as if Mayo were going to be beaten, yeah. they suddenly said, let's just go and play with a bit of adventure here. Know. And if we're going to be beaten, we'll be beaten going yeah. for it. And in fairness, they really went for it at the end. And they probably should have pulled it off because they had, they had possession in a great position. But you'd have to, as Pat and Joe have said, admire the fantastic spirit that these Mayo yep. players have. Like, you know, usually a team who has been beaten for years and years with 10 minutes to go under, well, seven points behind and said, oh, it's the same again, lads, mm -hmm. we'll mm -hmm. pack up and go home. Different. They said exactly Brilliant. the Different. opposite. Yeah. Dramatic? Yeah, it certainly was. More on today's big match in a little while. But right now, however, we would like to send you off to New York. That's our special Sunday game competition. And here are the details. RTE Sport are giving you the chance to win a fantastic five-night break for you and a friend to New York City. This great prize includes return flights, a four-star hotel stay in Manhattan, close to all the Big Apple's main attractions, and €1,000 in spending money to make your time in New York the trip of a lifetime. For your chance to win the lot, answer this. Which of these is a well-known park located in New York City? Is it Hyde Park, Phoenix Park or Central Park? To enter, call 15 16 71 71 82 or text the word football followed by your answer and name to 57001. Viewers in the north can also text to 57001 or call the number on screen. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines will close at midday on Monday, August 31st. Full details are on rte.ie forward slash competitions where the lucky winner will also be revealed.